when I first went to St Paul's, I was boarding because we had a. I was on the farm at Papama, and in my free time there, I used to go to Ron and Phil Holland's house at uh, Torbay. Ron and Philip had a uh, had pea passes each, so Ron taught me to sail. We wouldn't work at Torbay. Any free time Ron had, he, he would be writing, drawing yachts, reading about yachts, but he would draw yachts not just the outside, the sketch of them, he would draw them almost to scale. Design, the, the mast, the rigging. We spent a lot of time on the water there, sailing around the bays, scrambling over the rocks, and uh, had a good time. The sea has always been Ron's life. At school, he had no interest. Uh, anyone who was at school with him will know he had no interest whatsoever in the classroom. He saw no sense in arithmetic, algebra, bookkeeping, any of it, couldn't care less. Uh, the subject which he enjoyed and excelled in was art and drawing. He was top of the class. And his hidden love of learning was discovered through sailing books. I don't even think he knew he had a hidden love of learning. But suddenly he discovered sailing books and he loved them, especially stories on Captain Cook, cruising yachts, the Navy, as long as it had boats and ships. It's extraordinary, isn't it, how the sense of vocation identifies itself. So even at 15 and 16, this was Ron. At 16, having sailed across the Tasman, he left college having failed school C, uh, initially a boat builder, a building apprenticeship, but his interest was in design. His first commission, aged 18, was for a mate for a few beers, a 26-foot fin keel yacht. The thrill when it launched and floated exactly as designed changed Ron's life. By 21, Ron was in California to make a living out of sailing, quickly built his networks in sailing and yacht design. At 25, he designed and built a quarter tonner to become the USA and world's quarter ton champ. This is at 25. The success brought profile and Ron's design skills were in demand. He moved to Ireland for a design commission and stayed for 40 years. The design business grew with the racing success of his designs. He was a phenomenal success by this stage. Uh, his client list became a who's who in yachting, including British Prime Minister Edward Heath, uh, a, a, a Prince of Monaco, New Zealand's first America's Cup challenge, K7, jointly a Holland Far Davidson design. Remarkable. So Peter Blake, Lion New Zealand, Ron always said yes to potential clients' extreme requests, so he was prepared to take a risk with them if they were prepared. The boats got bigger and faster, like Condor, more luxurious boats, a 203-foot yacht with a single mast and four crew, large motor yachts. After 40 years in Ireland, Ron decided he needed to change, moving his business to Vancouver, where he is now. Ron's answer to the question, how did you do it, was say yes to every opportunity. Opportunities will keep coming if you say yes. Look after people. Believe in yourselves. Don't let others tell you what to do because nobody knows you like you do. Uh, have a go and learn from it. Extraordinary career, an extraordinary life for a boy who probably didn't think in the classroom he was going to amount to much, but had a skill and a love and made a remarkable career out of it. Now, here to accept the award on, on, on Ron's behalf is Paul Powney of the New Zealand Sailors, it's New Zealand Sailing Trust, owners of Lion New Zealand. And so we're going to welcome Paul to the stage, but can we please have a huge round of applause because we are filming this for Ron Holland. I have a sneaky suspicion that he actually loved it here. He just wasn't very good at many things. Um, no, uh, he he didn't. He, he told me that he didn't enjoy school, um, but he's also quite proud of the fact. I think that because uh, he often, he said this at lunch. He said, uh, "You know, I failed school cert twice." <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I think inspirational in uh, you know in what we've reflected on this evening and what he's achieved. Um, he's revered in the yachting world. Absolutely revered so, in, in the entire yachting world. In the entire, it is a global world. reputation. Um, one of the boats that were, was featured there was a boat called um, Mirabella Five, uh, 256, uh, 254 feet long, and uh, is the the largest single masted yacht in the world. And it was designed by Ron Holland. Yeah. Isn't that an extraordinary thing? Yeah. Extraordinary thing. Uh, um, and, and it, it's a recurring theme. I mean I, I, I mean, I think Paul probably excelled at school and sailed, absolutely sailed through it. But, but 
if we look at Monica, who took to 63 to get your PhD, if we, look, if, if, we, if, we, if we think of Mark and his message around, you know, playing, playing winning rugby league, but not always with winning teams, it's about actually having a dream and not giving up, isn't it? That was the message. And actually daring to believe that your dream can come true. Well, he says that he is, uh, he is living his dream. Um, it's, it's all he ever wanted to do. Uh, he started sailing when he was seven years old. Um, he sailed from Auckland to Sydney when he was 15. Um, started in a boat building apprentice at 16. Um, and his, he's always pursued uh, trying to get the best out of his next design. Um, he did say one thing though, he said that um, uh, whatever the brief from the owner was, the boats also had to be beautiful and he has built some beautiful boats. Uh, and we're lucky to be owning one of them lying in New Zealand. I, I still say it's um, the best looking maxi yacht, Whitbread yacht in the world. That's a fantastic thing, isn't it? Can you talk about uh, Lion New Zealand's association with the school? Yeah, so um, uh, Lion New Zealand, uh, we're, well, the trust was founded with uh, Lion New Zealand 11 years ago uh, with the purpose of uh, using it as a platform for youth development. Um, I, I guess the best way to to describe it to the uh, to a novice sailor or someone who hasn't been sailing uh, with our programs is we um, we take 25 kids, a couple of teachers, three crew. These boats are we we own Steinlager too as well. These boats are unchanged uh, from when they were sailed around the world, with the exception of adding some accommodation, extra accommodation. Um, we motor out of the marina, we point the the boats to wind, and then it's over to the kids to be sailing the boat. So it, it, it's very hands-on, uh, they get really involved. So Lion New Zealand was the first boat uh, that the Trust acquired last year, or two years ago, we put it through a $1.6 million restoration. Uh, and this year, uh, our, the boys from St Paul's uh, were the first group to go sailing on a fully restored Lion New Zealand. So um, after that, we realised the connection with uh, um, Ron Holland uh, uh, as an old boy of the school. Uh, so it was, it was really special. And, uh, and when Ron came out um, earlier this year, uh, he was, um, you know, uh, very, very proud of the connection. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a great fit. And um, I think one that uh, students in the school should be... Uh, inspired by, by Ron and, and his achievements of what he's done. If you think about it, Lion New Zealand was the catalyst for what's happened in, in, in our waterfront today and our, and our sailing history. Those boys went on a hell of an adventure. They were boys uh, in their 20s. Um, OK, Lion came second, but the, the following campaign, they won with Steinlager too. Hugely inspirational. Um, Ron Holland, Bruce Farr, uh, Sir Peter Blake. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, Ron's a legend. It's a great note. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming up and sharing that story. And I know Ron uh, is, is very proud of this. And I, I know you're proud of the association that you now have with the school because it's Ron's school. So thank you. And thank you for being here tonight. It's really kind of you to come. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Thank you very much.